So, so the positivists believe what about sociology? Do they believe it can or cannot be scientific? Exactly. So it's the positivists believe that sociology can be science. Um, and how can it be a science? Quantifying concepts. Quantifying. Making like um, going for us like a scientific methods. So having like a hypothesis and then. Yeah. Ex exactly. So it involves a scientific approach where you're trying to quantify phenomena in social life. In other words, trying to measure using numbers and statistics. Um, behaviour in, in social life. So you can follow a scientific methodology with a hypothesis, you're testing a, a, a prediction, and, and so on. And there's a, a difference between what Durkheim says compared to what Popper says, where Durkheim talks about gathering lots of evidence and then coming up with a theory. So for example, with suicide, he wanted to gather lots of evidence about who commits suicide, married or single, city dwellers or rural people with kids or people without kids. It's conclude and then he developed this conclusion analysing the patterns. His conclusion was social integration is the reason for suicide. People lack social integration and they're not bonded to the norms and values, they're more likely to commit suicide. And his evidence was married people are more bonded and responsible to each other, they're less likely to commit suicide. City dwellers are less bonded to each other. So the lack of community in cities are more likely to commit suicide and so on. The argument is criticised by the interpretivists who argue that sociology cannot be a science. Why do the interpretivists argue that sociology cannot be a science? Because I mean, they believe in like being able to gain a better understanding of the phenomena that you're responding to your participant and kind of just put it all into correlations and patterns and trends. Okay. Your behaviour is unpredictable. But I'm mm. conscious, so you can't study it in the same way that things that happen are actually in the book. Okay. Exactly. So human beings have a conscience, they have a consciousness. They don't behave in predictable ways. They don't behave in response to a stimulus, like a rat or, or like something under a microscope or something in the natural world. So you can't study them in the same way as you can study forces in the natural world. So the interpretivists use the example of suicide. They say the suicide rate itself, which Durkheim studied in different groups, is not a real fact. It's not accurate because people may not wish to let people know that their child has been a suicide. For example, Catholics and Muslims consider suicide very shameful. So you're less likely to find suicide, but it may still be a reality. So there's this argument that... Um, you know, society is a system where there's lots of variables. You, you can't always analyse the variables. And you don't know what's within someone's mind. The feminists, what would they say? They'd say that science itself is mainstream. You should be critical of science. You should co collaborate with people. We can still be objective just by using our values. The realists say that there's a difference between open and closed systems. The difference between a laboratory and society, what's the difference? So 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 in a laboratory you can access <coughs> and control everything. Or can you control an experiment? All the, all the variables. So in society, the argument is you can't control all the variables. And so one of the arguments from interpretivists is that you know society is different because you can't see or control, you can't measure and define all the variables because a lot of it takes place in someone's mind in terms of the meanings. And that's all that you can try to access, but you never get a fully uh, complete picture because of the social construction of data. As soon as a researcher makes a decision about how to interpret data, they're already imposing their own values. And they don't have a full, complete picture of someone else's mind. But the realists say that you can be scientific in sociology because you 
in science find examples of sciences that measure or make predictions about phenomena that cannot be directly observed. For example, seismology or meteorology, we're making predictions about meteorites hitting the Earth or about earthquakes taking place. We can't precisely predict those events because all of the variables are hidden, or some of the variables are hidden to us, not all of the variables are available to be measured. So the realists say we need to use mixed methods, for example, both qualitative methods and data and quantitative methods and data, both unstructured interviews and questionnaires and surveys, because by combining those methods, we get an idea of hidden processes that are taking place, but also the more directly observable processes and phenomena. Since science itself doesn't always make predictions about directly observable phenomena, it is possible that to say that sociology is also a science, as we also make predictions in sociology about phenomena that we can't directly observe. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. We can't always see what's going on in people's minds and how they're labelling or interpreting the behaviour of others. We can try and find out about that. We can also find out about the processes on a bigger scale, like poverty, unemployment they're more easy to observe. So we need both types of data. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. Question was, we, for me, <coughs> now that you just spoke about the realists, really do you have a, um, you know, a clear and concise viewpoint on um, research methods? And I believe that person would do that. Research um, makes methods probably the best because yes they as you said they're like they're a development of, of everything and people mm -hmm. use interpretivism they would say yeah you can use quantitative data to you know gain this but yeah sociology can go to science as well so we balance it out yeah, yeah. that's what yeah always always finding always finding a, like a balance yeah it is about point. balance because you're trying to improve <coughs> the validity of the results with more in-depth detail also the reliability of the results with more um, repeated results and therefore enhancing the whole of the research methodology and the reliability and then you get more of an understanding of what's, what kind of processes are play, perhaps taking place beneath the surface but also externally more obvious. Which you taught this student? No, no man, like, seriously.